welcome, welcome, boys. It's been a minute since I did a video, automotive related. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, but I've been ill. And still I am. And all winter long I've been doing Beetle stuff in the garage. And, well, I just haven't gotten around to uh, filming any of it. Again, kind of ill. And not a lot of time because I've been working OT like a madman all winter long. Barely had any time off and then when I do get it, we just go ahead and film the repair process or a correction. Just perform the repair process and not worry about filming it. But I figured I'll do an update now that it's kind of nice out and kind of warm. I can drag myself out of here to do a little filming. But we have a new beast. And it is the 2003 Dodge Dakota quad cab 4x4 V8. It's a 4.7 liter V8. We've already done quite a bit to it, but we have filmed it, or correction, performed it off camera. But I put pretty cool little bug deflectors on it. Ditto for some rain guards over there. The uh, headlights were very cloudy when I got them. I have replaced those entire assemblies. I left the turn signal assembly. This is actually one piece. The headlights, its own piece. You can actually fit some screws in here or fit a like a Torx driver in here. There's one there, and then a couple behind this weather stripping here, which separates the headlights from the turn signal housing. One of my co-workers has a Dakota. She replaced hers with some clear. And I believe put like some uh, amber like LED type deals in there. But I prefer the actual amber turn signal. So I left those. These are the only things that are LED. The headlights, some 9007s. I actually bought some from Oxido with my own cash money. I was very impressed with how the uh, neon ones were. So I bought some myself. I also replaced the fog lights housings and then put some LEDs from Oxido in there. They are also super bright. I love them. But we're going to go over some of the things I have done to it off camera. I did replace or I did add uh, this little guy for the trickle charger to be up in here. Since I just use this for truck stuff and I don't daily it. I do drive it every so often though just kind of Keep the fluids going through it. Came with a new alternator. I didn't have to replace that. The AC works. I checked the air filter. That's new. Uh, the coolant, I don't know how old that is, but it looks like somebody else put some sort of stop leak or something in it at some point in time. So I'm not sure if they're trying to seal like a head gasket leak or something else kind of leak, but I performed uh, I mean I've driven it for a minute. It doesn't leak. The coolant level never goes down, so I don't know. I'll replace that though. I'm gonna replace transmission fluid, uh, transfer case fluid. And I've already done the uh, the axle fluid, and that's because we replaced the Axle seals because the one on the passenger side was blown out. It had these locking lugs. I took them off. And I've done quite a few uh, pick and pull adventures that I did not capture as well. It does have third gen center caps, which are fine. I'll put these on. Put some mud guards on front and rear. Right now I have a bunch of wood in the back for burning and such. Added these guys, little blind spot mirrors. I did completely clean the interior, much like I did in a former Crown Vic video. <clears throat> and the interior is pretty mint. It did smell like an ashtray though. And originally when I got it, the center console did not lift up. It was just a solid one. So we added a 357 mag, five shot. 
along with some speed loaders and a bunch of uh, spare casings. So the fabric is different here. This is similar to what my dad's Ram has. Well, it's actually the same. Uh, later on, after I did a pick and pull adventure, I did find some that actually matched. <clears throat> but we already put this in here. I'm not that concerned about it not matching. It was more for uh, its function, but maybe one day, if I get around to it, we'll do that. I, I These LEDs that were in here, or correction, these bulbs that were in here burned out, I replaced them with new LEDs. Those are LED now. That light is LED now. I added some mats. Same for the back. I got the sun blocker outer deal. I had to add, put a steering wheel cover on it. Found it at the junkyard for like a dollar. It says RAM, but that's okay. Close enough for government work. The seat lifts up. I've got some jack tools I had to put in there. I think it came with the jack, but I don't remember. I just know it needed all the uh, tools to work. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still ill. Uh, it came with the bed liner. I did get a some stuff for a spray and liner, so once I remove all this stuff, I'm going to pull the bed liner out, spray it, and then put the bed liner back in. This tailgate did not come with it. It actually came with a third gen tailgate that didn't even match the color. So I got the second gen one that matches. It's from an earlier year, but at least the color matches. We just got to do a little bit of body work here. It does have the factory tow package. Put this third gen emblem on there. Cover the hitch receiver. Got a full size spare with a snow tire on it. And the one I pulled off of it was that uh, RT rim as my spare. We have, like I said, replaced differential fluid. And the axle seals. That was a very similar procedure to the Crown Vix. I wish I would have filmed it. I think it would have done very well. But that was a long day and I just didn't feel like it. I also put these Monroe load adjusting shocks on here. These things are freaking awesome. Like, all that wood that's in there is not even causing this thing to sag. No sag whatsoever. And I have new uh, Monroe shocks on the front. For the back, one was uh, blown out and one was not. So one worked, one didn't. Once you compressed it, it stayed compressed. The front, I had one that was blown out. You could compress it. And it would slowly go back up. And then the other one was completely seized. So one blown out, one seized on the front. One worked on the back, one was uh, blown out. And that's the side that had the axle seal leaking. You can still see the remnants of it, where we got some drippage over there. I also did some work on my co-worker's Dakota. When she came over, we did drum brakes on the back. But again, I didn't film it. That was kind of an impromptu emergency. She needed those things fixed. And then while I had everything out of here, I replaced the rear rotors, because this has disc brakes in the back. And my brakes, because they were uh, they were bad. I mean, they were almost to the uh, metal backing. I also replaced some LEDs in there. That lens needs buffed and kind of shined up. But we have two LEDs in there for the uh, the bed lights, and then the brake light is also LED. This is actually still stock housing. But this is a nice little truck. I do rather enjoy it. I do like it. And all the work that we've done on it so far is pretty easy. It does have an exhaust leak on the passenger side. But I discovered when I was replacing the front shocks that once you pull this wheel out and uh, lift the truck up when the suspension goes down, you got pretty easy access to the manifolds right here. So I really just need to spray some stuff on there and see if it's the manifold leaking on the passenger side or the flange and then replace whichever one of those actually added the V8 Magnum badges that didn't have it so the side was actually pretty clean it had nothing on it with the exception of the 4x4 decal but I wanted the Magnum
badge, that way if anybody asks, or nobody will be able to ask, they'll be like, hey, is that the V6 or the V8? It's the 8! It's got the selectable four-wheel drive, so we have two-wheel drive, it's a full-time auction, four high, four low, comes with a CD player, and then I got my uh, little deal down there with the SD card in it for music when tuned to the correct station. The windows all roll down. I don't know why the driver's side doesn't come with a mirror, but apparently none of them do. I guess, at least this one doesn't. I do like the little uh, overhead console in here. I can see my fuel economy and all kinds of other fun stuff. But I do like this thing. It's got a lot of miles on it, though. Pretty close to the BMWs, if I remember. 200 and some odd thousand miles. Yeah, 232, so a little bit less than the BMW's got now, I think. All the gauges work. Lights in here work. Shifts fine up and down. Like I said, the exhaust leak's the only, like, annoying thing. Dash is in good shape, not cracked. I added the steely here, just like I did with my Crown Vic. So I can mount my phone there for GPS or listen to my podcasts, whatever. Taking phone calls through that thing. Uh, the speakers are blown, I believe. They do sound terrible, so I do need to pull the door panels off and replace the speakers. And I think the only other thing I really need to do is, other than mentioning, uh, you know, some of that maintenance on the front end with the fluids is once I do the bed liner stuff, I, I do have a tailgate lock for it, so I can lock that, and I have a tanu cover I need to put on, on it, so uh, I can cover my bed stuff. Uh, I think I actually did put LEDs in here for the license plate lights, too. Yeah, I can see them in there. So I did put some LEDs in there as well. Kay's been driving the BMW lately because the Neon's got a bad radiator cracked on the seam just like the old one on this side where the uh, hot coolant comes out of the head and goes in there. So I need to replace that. Hope she didn't blow the head gasket again and then she can put this thing back in service. But I am thinking about trying to convince her to sell this thing and just get her a Beetle like I've got. That way they don't have head gaskets, they don't have radiators, one fluid, well I guess two if you count the transaxle fluid, but... <sighs> we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we get there. I do still need to spread all that and kind of level it. And then get more gravel in here. Which I guess now if you are just came for the Dakota stuff, you can probably click off. But I, I do have some questions because I've never owned a truck before about towing. I believe that the... So the gross vehicle weight, 6,010 pounds, which is kind of weak sauce. I believe if you add the front and the rear weight, uh, well, what I'm trying to find it, I guess at the curb weight. I don't know, I'm gonna have to, I guess I'm going to have to look into the owner's manual or do some searching. What I'm not 100% sure of is, I believe... The gross weight is, you know, the maximum weight this vehicle can have on it. And the curb weight is really going to be, is going to depend on vehicle to vehicle. Because this thing has four-wheel drive and a, and a V8 and a quad cab. So it should be quite heavy. So I think whatever the total curb weight is, if you subtract that number from the gross weight, whatever the difference is, is what you can, like, load in the bed... And I think towing is completely different. I, I believe you can tow more than what you can actually add, you know, to the bed. Which, like I mentioned earlier, if you look at this thing, it's still raked. The, the rear end is still sitting higher, even with all that weight in there, because of those load-adjusting shocks. And it still rides pretty smooth. Uh, and it also has torsion bars up front, there's no spring around the, uh, the shocks. But it rides great. But what I need to do is, I guess, run a dump trailer, load it up with rock, and then I don't know if I can 
take that much weight across my concrete without breaking it to get more gravel back here. Or if I should tear a hole in the fence over there and then I feel like I can navigate it through and then dump everything. And I feel like I should also mention it's been three years since I did the headlight restoration. They're just now starting to kind of get cloudy again. So that was a three year job with the sanding and the uh, the adding the ceramic coat. So I'd say did pretty good. So it's probably just time to refresh those a little bit. Sand them a little bit, put some more uh, some more ceramic coating on there. But I think that's it for this Dakota video. I just had to film something, I guess, kind of easy because, like I said, I'm still sick. And uh, we did so much stuff off camera. I think it would have been really good, really good viewing. But I'll try to do the uh, transfer case and the automatic transmission fluid, the engine oil, coolant. I'll do all that in the video, and then I'll probably also do the uh, the installation of the tanu cover and my tailgate lock. And then that should pretty much be it with the truck because I paid 4,500 big ones for this thing and You know, there's nothing wrong with it Other than that stuff I had to do, you know axle seal was leaking. That was easy. I'd done it before on the crown Vic. It was really the same procedure Only easier actually because uh, There's no ABS sensor in the back of this the ABS sensor is actually in the, the differential I believe uh, I can see that the, the pinion, or the, not the pinion gear, the other gear, the, the ring gear has like these little uh, teeth on it, if you will, that I believe the sensor is what it's measuring, so that was easy. You know, once you just connect that big thing on the inside, shove those axles through, it was easy to do. The only thing that, you know, because I was paranoid about the Crown Vix, is somewhere in here, I did, oh, there it is. I don't know if I can get the camera in here. That little hose right there. It originally had a cap on it. And I was like, oh no, I don't want my differential to build up too much pressure. So I took that cap off just because I didn't want my seals to blow out. So I don't know. I can you keep the cap on these things? Maybe you truck guys will also know that. Can you keep the keep cap? Can you keep the cap? On that, and you not build up pressure and blow out your seal. Uh, I don't know, because I ain't fixing to do that job again. It's not hard, I just don't want to do it again. Because if you pull the seals off, you need to pull the bearings off to do it. And if they're out, you might as well put new ones back in. But, I don't know. So I took it off, so it's venting now. But I also don't want shit getting stuck in there and clogging up my, my vent tube. So I might look into getting like a one-way valve type thing where it can let pressure out and none in. I don't know. We'll see. So, kind of a long-winded video, but I thought I'd give you something. Especially on this Dakota, because I do love it. Fun little truck. And the third gens are hideous, so if you're going to get a Dakota, you got to get the second gen. And uh, got everything I like on it. Four-wheel drive. I could have settled for a 5-speed, but I noticed I think the 5-speeds generally have crank windows and stuff. But So, I'll settle for the automatic if it means I get power stuff. But for 4500 bucks, I think I got a damn good deal on this thing for hardly anything wrong with it. So, alright, that'll do for this video. I think I'll do another one on the uh, Beetle. And see what you guys think of that and all the stuff we did to it off camera. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, boys. Peace.